Today we will continue reading from Sri Sri Radha Rasa Sudhanidhi. Verse 11. I'll read the verse one time and then move to where we were sharing yesterday, which in the blue book is the um, middle of page 33. When will that Radhika who is recognizable amongst the gopis by the effulgence coming from the moonstone-like toenails on her lotus feet and who is the very form of the essence of rasa and full passion, ever bestow her mercy upon me. Continuing with the quote from Chaitanya Charitamrita. The gopis danced in a circle, and the prince of Raj danced with Radha in the middle of that circle. <laughs> Shripad, in his form of a kinkari, sees how wonderfully sweet is Radha's artful dancing. And he, she, keeps his glance completely fixed on her lotus feet that shine like freshly blooming red lotus flowers of which each toe is a petal and each toenail shines like a moonstone. Shripad is enchanted by this vision. How sweet is the jingling of Radha's jeweled ankle bells. And how wonderful her jewel-like toenails shine with them. We have seen the thundering lightning dazzling in our eyes and causing our hearts to tremble with terror. But the lightning-like dazzling of Radhika's toenails that tremble along like thundering lightning vines while her ankle bells jingle along, 
pleases our eyes and makes our hearts play in the wonderful waves of blissful rasa. In this way, the maidservants experience that Sri Radha is the very form of an ocean of the essence of the rasa of Anurag. When the ocean of Anurag swells because ever new waves of bhava come up in it, it is called Mahabhav <clears throat> and Sri Radha is the personification of that Mahabhav. What to speak of Radhika's other limbs The maidservants are already enchanted by the trembling of her sweet, jewel-like toenails <coughs> that outshine the effulgence of all the other gopis. that dance around her in the great circle of the Rasa dance. Jai Shri Radhe. Jai. Jai Gurudev. Maybe a comment here. It's um, the scene now in verse 11 is completely different than the scene from before. In the in verse ten and before, there in the kund, yeah. is the sound okay? You hear me right? Okay, I have a new computer today. <laughs> um, but here we're in the Rasa dance, the famous Rasa Lila from. Uh, from uh, Canto 10 of Bhagavatam. And it's a bit surprising because it's also not mentioned in verse 11. So it's not uh, Prabhu Nanda who says we should talk about this. It comes to the heart of Ananta, that's Babaji. He wants to talk about the Rasa Lila. And the other thing we know, the Rasa Lila for you who are not familiar, this is this moment where the gopis meet Krishna in the in the forest, and the gopis who are expansions of Krishna uh, circle around him, and there are millions and millions of gopis as expansions of Krishna dancing with him. And he expands himself too to dance with them. So that for each of the 16 million gopis, there are 16 million Krishna. So they think that they are alone with him. And then there's Radha is not mentioned by name, but there's evidence that there's a special gopi, that Krishna has one 
interests one for one special gopi, and then there's the story about how he she disappears and then he disappears and and uh, we can detect that there's a there's an attraction. But I say all that because here the story is quite different. Now the the beauty and the and the and the attraction and the desirability of Radha is explicit. It's very clear who the who the most lovable one is, who the most beautiful one is, who the most uh, exciting of all the gopis is. It's it's Radhika. So in the mind of of Prabhupada Manjari, there's nothing but Radha. And she's completely dominating the picture. And now it's not like in the line of Chaitanya, it's quite remarkable because in the Rasa Leela, the gopis are dancing around Krishna. But what does it say here in the verse from Chaitanya Charitamrita? They're dancing around Radha. So Radha, if we see from the Manjari position, which is uh, Prabhupada's, we see Radha. And she's the beautiful one. And then when we when we go in deeper, that we see all the qualities of Radha, the toenails that shine in her moon-like face and the beautiful ankle belts. That... So it's really something very special that Ananta Das Babaji is doing here, that he's transforming the Rasa Leela, which is a Leela about Gopis and Krishna. He's revealing to us that it's actually a Leela about Radha and the Gopis. Jai. Radhe Radhe Udavaji, good morning. Radhe, good morning. Radhe. So, does it mean he's describing the Rasa Lila from the perspective of the maid servants and they are actually present? And for them, Radharani is in the center, or how do I understand it? That's how I, that's how I experience it, yes. That's what I meant to say. Hmm. Okay. So, there are also as many maidservants are present as all the gopis? No, I, no, I don't think uh, we would say this. The maidservants are the, are, you know, the, uh, the top class of gopis. So there are just uh, very few of these. You have the eight official uh, maidservants, and then you have all the, the, the others who are in Manjari Bhav. But there are very few of these. Oh, okay. So I don't okay. mean to say that all the gopis turn into Montaris. No, no. This would be impossible. No, there. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, my dear, for the beautiful explanation. And I um, feel yesterday Gurudev shared um, kind of some emphasis on the line when they're talking about Sripad in his King Kuri form, um, keeps his glance completely fixed on her lotus feet. And so he was sharing that in 
means in in our sadhaka deha when we're practicing this mandri bhav that we are um our vision and our mind are both fixed in in radha in radha rani we're, we're completely fixed on her lotus feet and i feel when you were describing the the beautiful rasalila this dance that goes on with the gopis and and radha rani in the middle um to me, I feel that like the mandris are not active participants in this dance, right? It's the gopis and Radharani dancing. And this is why we say, or this is why it's written, Tripod sees how wonderfully sweet Radha's artful dancing is. So they're witnessing this dance and they have to witness this dance. If they're engaged in the dance, then you're actively thinking about dancing. You're thinking about where you're placing your feet and maybe interacting with who you're dancing with. But the Mandri <clears throat> isn't interested in engaging in, in this dance. She is completely focused on Radharani. And why is that? Is because she's looking for service. In the um, quote above, they're describing very in, in very much beautiful detail the, the movement of um actually the movement of the gopis and we can imagine that you know radharani is is moving in her body's moving in these similar ways and all of these different components of her all can potentially require service at any moment and so only by being completely fixed on radharani by by being 100 percent focused on her can we see if maybe her sash comes a little bit loose and needs to be retightened or her ankle bells get intertwined and need to be straightened out or whatever might happen during this dance only if the manjaris are solely focused on her are they able to to become aware when their when their service is is needed mm. Therefore, Sripad says, I feel the wonderful trembling, or sorry, therefore, Sripad says, I see the wonderful trembling of Radha's toenails shining amongst the gopis. <laughs> There is also another explanation of this verse possible. In the previous verse, <coughs> Mohan anxiously fell at Radha's feet. One moment, sorry, my ears. She got in the previous verse, Mohan anxiously fell at Radha's feet in the presence of her maidservants and prayed to her for the festival of just one of her embraces. At that time, Mohan's form which is the essence of the ocean 
of Anurag Rasa became beautifully reflected tenfold on Radhika's ten jewel-like toenails. Much to the pleasure of the Sakis and Manjuri's eyes. Mohan is called the essence of the ocean of Anurag Rasa. Because it is this passion, <clears throat> Anurag, with which he anxiously prays to Radhika for a festival of embraces. That is visible on his face, in his eyes, and on each of his limbs. The Sakis and Manjuris see him as love of Radhika personified. It's a beautiful line to feel how we can view Mohan in um, with with the vision of a manjri. So often there's there's descriptions of Mohan and in um, in these sharings, and especially when we maybe when we travel outside of of our of our sangha, and there's a lot of talk of, of Krishna of. Um, and it's and it's really nice to for me to think of him as Radhika's love personified. And this way we always have this vision of of Radharani anytime we hear we hear of, of Krishna. He's actually the personification of her love. Yeah, I'm really, really happy you put your your finger on this on this line. I, I I feel like you that it's very 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 important, and in a way, it 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 it's hiding the secret of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. In the couple of lines before, then uh, Prabhupada mentions that. The Krishna is the reservoir, he's the ocean. He's the ocean of Anurag. So he's the ocean of feelings. But that's not the same as actually feeling the feelings. Mm -hmm. And this is the position that Radha has. In the appearance of, of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Krishna says, I am all love, but I'm not able to feel the feeling of loving. So he takes the mood of Radha in order to be the lover, to be the subject. And that's what's happening in this line you so nicely pointed out. The Manjaris and, and the Sakis, they see Mohan as Radha's loving emotions in person. 
And this is linked also to this word anurag. Rag means the highest passion. But anurag means the highest passion that invites, or the highest feeling that invites to, to experiencing that feeling. So even if, if Mohan is the highest love, he's unable to feel the, have the experience of loving. And that is what that is what Radha does. So all the Manjari see there is Radha, because she's the she's this experience of loving, which Mohan only he only dreams about, or he longs for. I wonder about the word or Buddha or any one of you. Um, have any feelings about the word anurag? I have heard. I feel in a, in a variety of contexts. Um, I've heard anurag, and I might be mistaken, as in the past as being basically like an exchange of feelings. So like a two way. So rag is like when I give to you, but anurag is when I give to you and you give to me. And here in, I mean, in, with just reading kind of on the surface, what it reads here is they're relating anurag to passion because it is this passion, and then parentheses, anurag. And then I also recall from um, a previous talk that Anu, Gurudev defined as basically like one-pointed or constant, um, the prefix Anu. And so we have this this one-pointed feeling, this one-pointed passion, this rag, but then it's also an exchange. Yeah, I think I, I, I think you have all the right, all the right elements there. So Rag is this highest passion, Rag. Anu is one, and it also means to direct towards one, to invite, to follow towards the one, towards the oneness. So in a way, Anurag, and it's a different way of saying exchange, the word you used, Anurag means leading one to follow, leading one to experience passion. So it's not just passion, it's passion from both sides, like you said, exchange. Once again, the Radha is the living, active, Lover, the subject. And Mohan is the beloved, the, the, the ocean that's still. So Anurag means, in a way, I'm really just trying to feel it now. I, I'm not. 
I'm a little bit out of my pay grade. Um, Anurag is this invitation to feel the passion. Follow me one pointedly to experience this passion. Uh, Anurag. If Rag is, is one side, then Anurag is two sides. Feel what I'm feeling. To love a person means not automatically that another person also loves me. And uh, so for the Rasa dance, or um, to come in this, there is need, Anurag, that both love each other. So like uh, what I see, there is a, and last time I also spoke about the idol, maybe a music star and a young girl completely fell in love with this music star and she will get all information about him and her mind and heart is fully fixed on this person. But this uh, the other person even didn't know her. So it's from one side. And there is no Anurag. Maybe Rag from one side, but no Anurag. So this exchange of feeling will never come. And what I uh, also meditate on this Anurag is when there are birds like flamingos or uh, swans. When they meet, meet each other, before they come together, in the beginning, they have a, a long uh, time of dancing. Maybe you know these pictures of the swans or of the flamingos. When they meet each other, uh, with how many different kinds of uh, movings they make till the moment they are completely in the same rhythm and their hearts are beating on in the same what is it also rhythm we can say now so what then these two hearts become one heart and for me that is a a beautiful picture of the birds and uh, even we have also this tradition when uh, two lovers in the beginning they don't know each other so much no maybe there is rock but it's not 100 percent anurag but then they celebrate dancing together then meeting together, but the dance is, is very important or was important in our uh, society. And so it's not so far to, uh, to get the, the feeling of uh, Rag and Anurag. And when this uh, culminates to the full this is what we read about now. They play together, they uh, dance together. So this absorption to each other, this is for me, this is Anurag. This loving absorption. Both only think on each other, on the other one. There is not one who think on 
his or her beloved, but both are complete. Absorbed. And uh, Krishna is the relisher of the bath. So he is called, what is it? Uh, Rasa, what is the name? Rasa Shekara. Rasa Shekara. And she is called Mahabha. So the highest relisha and the highest emotion uh, comes together. Both are hundred percent. All the gopis, they are ex actually they are the expansion of Radhika. And in the same way, Krishna expand himself in so many gopis but this uh it's to 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 who see this there are these manjaris around radhika they relish the whole scene of anurag They relish the feelings, but their bath is still fixed in the service mode. So they are only waiting for that moment. A new service will come. And so they are watching the scene. and can see the beauty of the Swamini's lotus feet. And through this mirror of her lotus feet, they can also relish ten times this moha. So and then the, this anurag is in in the full uh, in the full passion we could say like it is described here because this anurag when they dance together and they see in their eyes and they feel together then of course there will uh, uh, passion growing in Anurag. And it's a, uh, a this this kind of preparation for the meeting. And uh, meeting will be in that moment when the anurag is on the highest level so this anurag is to expand and to relish and then this union will be uh, uh, this extreme kind of ecstasy So Swamini's desires will be fulfilled when she is able to, to overflow this Mohan, who is the relisher of that, with her Mahabha. No other person can, can get this tsunami of, uh, of feelings. And uh, then our Mohan, he is, he has the full capacity to get this tsunami 
and handle it. No one else but him is able to handle this, and even he sometimes become unconscious by this, we say in German, Wucht. I don't know in English. Um, by this immense, powerful tsunami of Swamini, when she is in the full passion, no one can stop her. When sometimes we read that uh, she is moving like a wild elephant, so that means that she has a unstoppable power. Like when wild elephants are, they uh, they even don't take care of of uh, of uh, trees. They break them down. So we can imagine when Swamini is in that kind of passion movement, and uh, then. She is, no one can stop her. This is the beauty of this. When both are in this anura, she is the capacity of relishing and she is, he is the capacity and she is this source of this Mahabha. And from their toenails, this energy of the Mahabhava is floating, flooding to all the other gopis around, because she is the source of that. And this is coming from her lotus feet. And so they try to explain this shining of the lotus feet of our Swamini. From all the gopis, we can we can get easily the shining of this, like a like the thunder in the clouds. Sometimes when we fly to India, we come through a <clears throat> heavy thunderstorm, and from we are on the top of the we are higher than even the clouds are. But we can see how many thunders are uh, uh, in the clouds. And there is a blue and a yellow golden thunder. It's mixed. And that is, uh, they try to explain the beauty of her toenails like that of the moment when this thunder is uh, in the clouds and this shining of the It means so it means um there's an exchange, but it's not an equal exchange between Radha and Mohan. Otherwise it would just go nowhere. It's a perfect uh It's a perfection of that, what we ex, uh, try to explain. But I mean to say that Anurag is the, the one-pointedness of uh, Radha and Mohan is not the same as Mohan and Radha. Mohan is uh, 
busy with 16 million gopis. Um, Radha and Mohan are one pointed to each other. But uh, of course, we can see that there are desires in Mohan. So, because of this, to fulfill these desires, Radhika expand in all these gopis to satisfied to make him happy because she is the the one who is in Krishna consciousness. <laughs> but after all, he tried this, he could always come back to her. He has many jobs to do. And so we remember his heartbreaking feelings in Dwaraka. With all his beautiful queens there. With all this beautiful palace he is living there, with beautiful kids. And then he explained to Uddhava what has happened in his heart, why he is crying. And in night time, he is calling the name of her Swamini. No, his Swamini. Mm -hmm. So we can see the compassion, compassion of, of our Swamini, how she expanded all different kinds of forms. To make Mohan happy. She knows everything about him. But he will always come back to her. And this picture we got the days before, when he is begging for her audience in front of the Kunja, and then the Manjaris are, wow, this is a moment we are waiting for. <laughs> How sweet is this Seva then? when God is coming with folded hands on her knees, on his knees. Please let me, let me in in this punja and meet my Swamini. And after that, Babaji, a couple times in a row, describes Mohan as the essence of the ocean of Anurag Rasa. 
And I feel that this Anurag is a a key, kind of this hidden pathway into um, showing us that Mohan actually desires loving exchange. He's not an ocean of Rag. It's an Anurag where he has this, he's constantly giving out this, this anurag, this exchange that he's looking for. Mm. And this is a, this is a Radha Mohanic looking for exchange. Mm. And uh, Radha is the exchange. So Radha comes to give the love back. Mohan is beloved, and Radha is lover. That's what I understand too, uh, Mahatmaji, just like you say. It's his reservoir, but a reservoir is just a, a tank full of, a pot full of, of wrath, of emotion, what to do with the emotion, we have to give it, or it has no meaning at all. So Radha is what gives the wrath meaning. It's very nice to say, like we do in the Abrahamic religions, God is love. But the question that Mahaprabhu answers for us is, how do we feel that love? How do we give that love? What does it mean to experience that love? That's what's new about Mahaprabhu. He says, hey, look, this is what it looks like when God's love is in action. That's what we see in the Radha and Mohan, that loving relationship. Yeah, and that's the difference between Raga Rasa and Anurag Rasa. There you go. That's it. Uh, actually, just this, this reservoir, this like love, that God is love, his energy is actually this loving exchange. It's not just a light. Be, become a light. It's, I have this body, this love, and we are looking for exchange. We want this, this relationship. It's like a tank full of gas, of gasoline, petrol. You know, you, what, what do you do with it? Well, it's useless unless you put it in a motor and let it burn. And release its energy. Petrol is only has, has only energy. It can only release its energy when we put it into the into the motor. Yeah. What are they? Um, oh man, I'm going way back here. And in physics, they have like kinetic <laughs> energy. <laughs> potential, right? It's potential energy, and it needs to turn into kinetic energy. Uh, exactly. That's the point. Yeah, exactly. Or let's call it amorous energy. <laughs> energy stored or energy exchanged. Ladani, it's the same. It is energy. You know, we talk about that uh, Mohan is Ladani. He's all uh, pleasure, bliss. He's Satchitananda. He's bliss, Ananda. And Radha is Ladani Shakti, the bliss energy. So Ladani is the potential energy you're talking about. And Ladani Shakti is the kinetic energy. So it's a really good uh, <laughs> analogy. So Radharani is not only the source of this energy, she's also the opportunity for him to express it. 
Well, source, we say that she's the embodiment of this energy. She's the embodiment of Ladani Shakti. <laughs> the source of it is Krishna, the creator of the universe, Vishnu. All the energy in the universe is created. But she's the one who puts it into, embodies it, puts it into action. But she's also her his um, internal potency, right? Like yeah. her his his loving energy comes from her. Or is that? Yeah, but that, that we're talking about the internal potency of Radha Mohan of Krishna in the in the <clears throat> in the pre uh, Mahaprabhu sense. Oh, okay, she's the Ladini Shakti of this Krishna. And then with Mahaprabhu, she gets to embody that and she gets to put that into action, puts that into a loving relation. Mm -hmm. Oh, you have one. Is this working, my Lade? No. Lade. Yeah. Lade, Lade. 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 So, uh, just this preparation for Radha and Mohan's loving feeling. Raga Anuraga Baba Mahababa. Now, Talk Rav and Mahatma Ji explanation very nicely. This is uh, like uh, energy. And here, Anantadas Baba will say, it's written with Jwara Niramani. Before I read, and uh, this Jwara Niramani comment, Gurudev says underline. I couldn't uh, understand clearly, but by listening, you are exchanging. Now, I think we can understand more deeply what uh, Rupa Gosami says, the uh, meaning of Anuraga and why Anuraga is important. Thank you, Ravi. I think you stop with the festival of embraces, is it? Yeah, that'd be good to go. Thank you. Or maybe a little bit, we can start a little. Krishna is called the essence of the ocean of Anurag, Rasa. Krishna is called the essence of the ocean <clears throat> of Anurag Rasa because it is this passion, Anurag, with which he anxiously prays to Radhika 
for a festival of embraces. That is visible on his face, in his eyes, and on each of his limbs. The Sakis and Mundries see him as love of Radhika personified. His desires are not fulfilled by falling at Radhika's feet alone. So he divides himself in ten to take shelter of her feet in this way. means his desire for Radharani is so strong that just one exchange isn't enough. He needs ten. Ten of himself to feel the, to take the shelter of her. Another definition of Anurag <clears throat> is given in Ujvala Nilamani. That love which makes one experience the beloved as being ever fresh and which is itself also fresh at every moment is called Anurag. In the stage of Anurag. Maybe we can uh, uh, again reread this verse. It was uh, very. Yeah. <laughs> that love <clears throat> which makes one experience the beloved as being ever fresh and which is itself also fresh at every moment is called Anurag. And which is itself also fresh at every moment. Mm -hmm. We experience the beloved all, always ever fresh and it is itself also fresh at every moment that's very uh, this is a, a beautiful explanation I feel So the experience with the beloved is ever fresh, never, never getting old or changing. It's ever fresh. And the love itself is also fresh. And like this, the first meeting, like the first meeting, always. Yeah, exactly. Always like meeting for the first time. And this is possible on the previous page. Anandadas Babaji says, When the ocean of Anurag swells because ever new waves of Baba come up in it, it is called Mahabab. And Sri Radha is the personification of that Mahabhav. 
So the reason that the experience with the beloved is ever fresh and the love itself is ever fresh is because it comes from Mahabhav, from Radharani herself. And it's this love, it's this exchange it is Mahabhav at its core is called Anurag. It's really, it's really wonderful. The, the, you know, in the in the Vedic cosmology, there are a finite number of souls. We could count them. And there's a finite amount of matter as well. It's created once, and it goes in and out of manifestation, but it's the same always. But what grows endlessly is love. Never stops growing. Every time the gods meet, it's bigger. as though it were the first meeting. Yeah. Like in the West, we would say, well, what's the meaning of history? We'd say, well, it's progress and civilization and welfare and technology keeps on growing, keeps getting bigger and better. And in Bhakti, we would say, history, it's the endless increase of love. <laughs> um, maybe relevant question? Let's go to Hello. Um, there's this ever fresh love, like the first time the gods meet, and then I'm sort of wondering what the difference between love and maybe attachment is, or the thing that grows over time. So the first meeting must be I don't know, not so deep, maybe because they. 500 or later. Um, Makes sense? Yeah. Is this their divides? Is attachment something else? So bad materialist thing somehow? Actually, we didn't got the, uh, the question perfectly because the, uh, it was not clear the voice. Maybe you can repeat, please. What's your name, Robert? Uh, hello, my name is Bendik. Nice to meet you. I was wondering if there is a difference between attachment, maybe, and love, where I'm confused with this ever fresh first love supposedly being a good thing. Uh, it seems that love grows over time, it's not at its peak at the first meeting. But part of it, probably, in this text is. So it's as it's as if it were the first meeting. So, the first meeting, you think I could never feel greater love than this, and in the second meeting, you feel you think I could never feel greater love than this, and the third meeting, and so on. So it's it's not the love is like the first meeting. It's the love is as if. We had never met before, every time. 
you fall in love every day. It's exhausting. <laughs> <laughs> and attachment, like many things, we talk about it in two ways. In the material attachment is is understood as a blockage to spiritual development. But something called spiritual attachment is a necessity. So we need to be firmly engaged in our and focused and one pointed on the object of our our love. This is uh, this is spiritual attachment. And as, as for the difference between attachment and love, attachment means being fixed. You could use the word concentrated, but that's a little bit too psychological. That all the energy of your love is flowing towards the one object. And then love, on the other hand, is that flow. Love is a form of energy. So that when the energy is flowing, like it would flow through electrical cables, then this is what love is. Loving is <coughs> what it is to love. Please, Gaura, help us. I mean, attachment is only a part of love. Attachment uh, needs attachment also in the love. We are attached to that one who we love. But love is the highest feeling in that. We call it also prema. We give up everything to this one we really love. So we are uh, also in the material world, the women, maybe in modern time, not so much, they also give up their names, their uh, family names. They leave the house. They move towards the husband. Maybe it's not always in a, in a material world, it's not always made of love because it's a tradition, but that we have to learn. Mm -hmm. If we really fall in love, we will give up everything. Mm -hmm. And in the, in the Manjari and Gopi, they also give up their uh, shyness and they give up the family, uh, social, uh, forms. They, they are leaving their houses. I mean, they are married. That to understand. I mean, in the spiritual world, it's a difference, but it's, uh, even there, it's, uh, uh, uh the highest form of this. When they listen to the flute of Mohan, they run away from their house because of love. So there is attachment, of course, because of love. Love is an emotion, an immense, the highest emotion we are searching for, and this is called prema. Everyone, even in the material world, is desiring love, isn't it? This is the highest we are looking for, uh, we are looking maybe on different places. We don't know what really is our desire. But when love is there, it's so 
dominant, prominent. We we really cannot sing on any other thing, but on the face and the moving and all this we know from our beloved. And so Radha and Mohan also. They fall because they are eternal. They are always young. And every day they fell fresh in the love to each other. Well, we can continue. It's so nice description also by the Ananda Das Babaji and in the scriptures, how they try to explain this intense feelings between God and Goddess. Radhe Radhe. Sorry. <laughs> Maybe I can share something. I I was feeling also very interested about this other freshness. And I thought in the material world we have this experience when we are completely present. And it's very fresh in that moment. But then we go back to maybe memorizing this moment, we fall back into future and past in this mental experience. But the spiritual world, there is, I guess, it's eternal and it means it's in every moment 100% present and 100% fresh. So. I don't know, maybe there is this very tiny connection for us when we, it's like a gift to be completely present and then there is no judgment, no going to the past. So I don't know, that just came to me. Um, yeah. yeah, so very nice. Yes, we have, we have experiences of this, sometimes very short. Sometimes longer. Yeah. This presence, this is the principle of bhakti, this presence, when we're in our svarup, when we're being ourselves, who we are, then we're in, in love. And it's, fortunately, we have these fleeting, quick experiences from time to time, because that gives us faith. And that gives us the, the greed to keep on going. So we have to have this little experience, this little taste. That's, of course, why everybody's here. You wouldn't be here sitting, you wouldn't travel to Vrindavan and sit in the freezing cold at six in the morning if you just read about this in a book and thought it was curious. You're there because you feel something. And that's that presence you're talking about, one. And you want to make it grow so that it's not 12 seconds a day, like we most of us experience in meditation, but one minute a day, and then five minutes a day, and then one hour a day, and so on and so forth. Yeah, thank you. I feel also that's the only um, moment or possibility where uh, I can surrender and let go of wanting, material wanting to have greed, to have whatever devotion, to let go of all this. It's only possible in this very moment just to accept, I'm, I'm just waiting <laughs> it mm -hmm. to have grace. I cannot do it. It's only possible in just being fully present and openness. Mm. Yeah, they're the same thing, my dear. They're, um, being present is surrendering. 
when you have that feeling in the middle of you know meditation or maybe in the middle of dancing or singing when you're just there this is called surrender and for most of us it disappears quickly so the goal is to make that stay In the stage of Anurag, the increase of desire is so strong that the forms and qualities of the beloved appear. Appear. The form and quality appear. That's amazing, huh? The stage of Anurag, the increase of desire is so strong that the form and qualities of the beloved appear. It's amazing, no? As ever fresh at every moment. Okay. One, I'm going to read that again. In the stage of Anurag, the increase of desire is so strong that the forms and qualities of the beloved appear as ever fresh in every moment. Can measure one's taste by one's thirst. A person who has no thirst will not even enjoy drinking an ocean of nectar. How much desire Mohan shows for attaining one single embrace of Srimati's. Anurag causes the lover and beloved to control each other. And therefore, Mohan can justly be called the ocean of the essence of Anurag Rasa. Because he 
is controlled by Srimati's love to the utmost. Suddenly, the transcendental vision disappears, and Sripad, returning to his sadaka level, humbly prays, Will that Radhika ever give me her mercy? Thus ends verse 11. Perfect timing, Madhmaji. Yeah. We, we lost our clock here. We have, there's big shifts going on with um, furniture and things. And so our, I had no idea what time I was like, oh, we, our time. Oh, nice. It's out of the corner, <laughs> which is good. You know, this is pretty common. Timeless. <laughs> Ever fresh. Stairs and it's totally different. Ever fresh <laughs> down, come downstairs and feel the ever freshness, the surprise. <laughs> and it's also a beautiful meditation for today. Will mm -hmm. that Radhika ever give me her mercy? Yeah, this is our prayer. Which is like old English for I hope that. Yeah. Or I see, I, I feel that way. Yeah, we're asking, we're asking for that. Like, mm -hmm. will, like, will, will it ever happen? Like, please, to me, mm -hmm. will this ever happen? I'm such a, you know, for uh, like for me, I'm like, I'm such a fall and someone so far away. Like, will this ever happen for me? Mm -hmm. Radhe, Radhe. Sorry, one last question. Does eternity then also, one can say, there is no past and no future? Or is this too short? <laughs> Sorry. Just end things with a light question, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, in, in spiritual world, there's no time. Time is material, as is space. Okay. Um, this is why we prefer the word Leela to past time. Mm -hmm. Just know that the Leelas are past, past, and yeah, future. They're always going on. They always have gone on. They always will go on. <laughs> You two play some money. Um, that's why everything is great. Any moment is great because no past, no future. And uh, we cannot think by mind. You will never say just uh, we need experience. This is not by philosophy. That's why you chant the mantra and the listening is chant the mantra. And because we are waiting for this experience, and this experience, the person I can do, can I understand the reality?
but that not means that the time is frozen. It's a it's a real uh, action in the moment. Mm -hmm. We are not inactive, like in the in the stage of this uh, nirvana or how we say mm -hmm. liberated form of the soul. There is no exchange in this in this when we uh, give up the form. There is no exchange of love. There is no anurag. Because for anurag, you always need two persons, two individuals. So this is a very active form of being. But how we said, it's always expanding. Uh, whatever I explained, love is the only thing what is always expanding. Because if you share it, it will become double. And when there is no, no, no space in eternity, where is the Leela happening? Who say there is no space? Everywhere it's happening. The spiritual there is unlimited. unlimited. There is no limit on space and everything, right? The Leela, the spiritual world doesn't have a place. It's not go down the street, turn left, and then go 500 meters. There's no place. It's everywhere and nowhere. But this is hard to understand for a limited mind to understand the unlimited. This is hard so, to understand, yes. So who can explain this? But it's actually true. these books are explaining something of that world. And uh, they're using words from this world, because we have only experience from things around us. Mm -hmm. We have no experience of the eternal world, of the spiritual world. But those who wrote these books, they, they was there. They open a window and a door so that we can imagine with our our limited mind and senses. So that we able to meditate on on these beautiful things. Yeah, I guess that's the curtain that we're speaking of our material covering. It's so dense, we cannot see that it's everywhere at any time. But that not means that we have to travel somewhere to uh, <laughs> to relish this. We can get it here now within, in every moment. Swamini, when Swamini will appear, will that Radhika ever give me her mercy? That means that we can relish this abode. But this is an act of, of her mercy. So this is what we are praying for. The other side and, of the... Hmm? Excuse me. Sorry, whatever? No, I, I'm sorry to interrupt. Go ahead, please. No, that's fine. I, that's it. That's it's, uh, it's mercy, right? Yeah. And that we have to waiting for, but uh, I like to pressure every day. So, so how many? My time is limited. Please listen to me now. Don't wait for tomorrow. Please today, please come. Give me your mercy. 
Let me give give me one glimpse of your only one glimpse. Like Mohan, we can learn from Mohan so much. We also have to be begging on our knees with folded hands to the manjaris. Please give me the entrance in the kunja. Please give me the audience of Swamini. They are checking the door. So that is, and that happened to our Gurudev. Jai Shri Rathe.